everyone. Hi, I'm Frank Messina, and welcome to the, excuse me, to the June 20th, 2023 meeting of the Chatham Historical Commission. Uh, before we start, we have some announcements that we have to make. Please note this meeting is being recorded and will be available shortly hereafter for scheduled and on-demand viewing on any smartphone or tablet device. If anyone else is recording the meeting, please notify the chairman. Don't, nobody? Pursuant to Governor Healy's March 29, 2023, signing of an act of 2023, extending certain, certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law 30A20, until March 31st, 2025, this meeting of the Chatham Historical Commission is being conducted in person and via remote participation. Every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. As a reminder, persons who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may doing so by calling the phone number 508-945-4410. Conference ID 569-691-88 hashtag, or by joining the meeting online via Microsoft Teams through the link in the posted agenda. While this is a live broadcast and simulcast on channel 18, despite our best efforts, we may not be able to provide for real time as access. We'll record a record of this meeting on the town's website as soon as possible. The uh, next order of business is, uh, is a roll call. Uh, but before we start the roll call, I would like to, to spend uh, just a minute of uh, silence. We just recently lost a member of the commission, Ben Smolazinski. And so I just, for the second, if we could all just bow our heads in, in a couple of minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ben was a good guy. We're gonna miss his laugh and, uh, and his comments. So, roll call. Uh, Bob Lear? Yes. Steve Burlingame? Yes. Stephanie Hamilton? Yes. That's it. That's perfect. Do you think that Jane, ha Jane Moffitt, sure. remotely? I'm here. Very here. good. Don Aikman? Here. Sandy Porter? Here. Thank you. Uh, Jane Tennyson? Jana Tennyson here. Jana Tennyson? What did I say, Jane? It's okay. Okay. I and anything. the chair, Vice uh, Frank Messina, is here. Uh, so in uh, Ben's absence, Sandy Porter, the alternate, will be voting in his stead. The process is we have two alternates, and when a regular member is missing, the alternate participates and vote. Both alternates can participate, but only one will vote to make our regular seven members of the, of the meeting. Okay. Uh, the next order of business, very simply, uh, well, I want to acknowledge Annie Hayes here, who's helping us out, and Christina Bassett is remote. Hello, Christina. Okay. So uh, why don't we proceed? The first order of business is the minutes of June 6, 2023. Everyone has had the minutes, and you have a copy in front of you. Any comments or questions, suggestions? I'd like to make a motion that we accept the minutes from June 6, 2023. Thank you very much. And second? Second. Second by Janet. All right. Any other comments or questions? None? Roll call. Bob? Yes. Steve? Yes. Steph? Yes. Jane? Yes. Don? Yes. Sandy? Yes. And that's it. The chair votes yes. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. We have... Uh, three hearings to uh, work our way through. The, the first item is 19 Highland Avenue. This is a structure which is not in the National Register District, and there is no Form B in the property. But fortunately or unfortunately, uh, years ago when they first came to us, the board, the commission voted it was historically significant. So. Uh, we will address that issue again and then proceed. Uh, 
This also was listed in the uh, survey as a lower priority on the property relative to, to generating a form, form B. Um, back in, it was back before us in 2015? Yes. Okay, can you introduce yourself for me and then we just proceed? Good morning, Mark Siebrat representing the Gallagher's. The Gallagher's are here today to answer any questions that you may have for them. Uh, we are looking to demolish uh, the property at 19 Highland Avenue. As some of you were there, we had a site visit on Friday to review the property, take a look at it. Uh, and I chance to comment with some of you about what we're doing. Um, it is our intention to, 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 to demolish the building. Um, in reviewing and deciding whether it is historically significant, our records indicate, or the records of the town indicate, the building was built in 1920. Uh, it is more than 75 years old. However, there is an and after the 75 years old. It's to make that determination that it is architecturally significant, it needs to be determined that it is related to historical person or events, or it has to have some sort of historical architectural value. Um, as, you, as you said, it, there is no Form B on it, which is a record the town keeps to document historical buildings. It is also uh, noted in the 2015 architectural survey as not uh, being significant, and it is of a um, generic type of a uh, structure, which doesn't fall, uh, that they felt was worth worth saving, I would assume. I'm not sure what the term they use. Uh, so we're suggesting that there not be a demolition delay proposed for this project, as it has no historical significance. Now, as Frank had mentioned, it did come before the board prior to this, and two years have since passed, more than two years have passed, which, according to your bylaws, basically noids, voids any decision the board made at that hearing. So we're here before you again to rehear it and uh, see what the board says. Thank you. At the sector, the first was a nice application. Thank you very much. You did your homework, as you usually do. Thank you. Pointing out the, uh, the knot in the rope, you know, where <laughs> we know and don't know. Uh, but it's interesting, when you say that, I, I assume the board put an 18-month delay on it. Or I don't know if they No, did. there was no delay imposed. Well, no, previously? Yeah, because you were doing a renovation of the building. They were, uh, Minglewood presented the project. Oh, okay, so it was just there, a modification. There was a modification. Okay, I was going to say if it was a demolition and technically... Yeah, it went it. through two hearings to get there. Yeah. Um, and at that time, the discussion for the demolition delay was very brief. Whether it was historically significant was very brief. Uh, one of the board members said it's kind of a stretch to do it, uh, but there was no criteria discussed by the board as to why it was historically significant mm -hmm. other than maybe that it was sem over 75 years old. So the board ruled it was historically significant but allowed the, the, the changes you were making were not going to interfere with its historical significance. I got it. That Thank is correct. Much. I appreciate that. So, uh, all right. We... Well, all of us, or most of us, I think, drove by or saw the property, and we know it. And it is a, I thought it was a stretch back then, but why don't we proceed with the discussion relative to the historical significance of the property? Uh, does anybody have any comments or questions? We'll start. Janet? Well, it was built in 1920, so I guess it's historic. Um, but no, it's 75 years old. I think the point, I'm not making your point now. Yeah, Thank the you. point is the, <laughs> the 75 years is a threshold uh -huh. to us review it. Mm -hmm. And the question is all right, it's 75 years, is it historic? Is it? Oh, well, it's a darling house. It really is cute. I kind of hate to see it go. In fact, when we interviewed the neighbors down the street that want to put an addition on, they were very disappointed that that was their entry into the street was going to be lost. But anyway, um, I'd say um, it was built in 1920, but it doesn't bear any historic features to the naked eye. Let's put it that way. Okay. 
Ms. DeLear. Well, I, I agree with Janet. I think it is historic. Whether it's significant is the issue. And um, I frankly lack the background without some supporting documentation to make any kind of determination. It looks like a cute little cottage that's been expanded a bit, but does that make it stand out as significant? I, I, I'm willing to be swayed one way or the other. Okay. Yeah. Don? I would agree with uh, what has been said, that uh, it's a nice, lovely little house. It's unfortunate we can't move it someplace else, but that's not possible, I'm sure. But um, it, it'll be a loss. Steve? Well, notwithstanding the fact that it's historically significant because of its age, I don't see any other criteria that it meets that would um, sway me to uh, oppose the application. Okay. Steph? I have to agree with everything that's been said. All right. Sandy? I agree. It's a darling little house, but age is the only thing that makes it significant. All right. It'll Steve? be darling when it's done. Okay. We seem you to promise? be in violent agreement here, but uh, <laughs> if I may ask, I know I asked you at the site visit, and, and you kind of didn't answer it, but didn't know it. And do you have, and I'm looking at the owners here, uh, obviously it's a very, uh, it's a very nice street. There's some nice homes on that property in terms of the scale. Uh, can you, I, I'm not saying, we have no authority relative to what you're going to put there, but just to ask the question, do you have any sense of what you're going to put there? And, you know, and, and I'll be honest with you, my concern, and, and I think the concern that this board has expressed, and maybe we're moving away from technically what we're supposed to be doing, but that's life, okay? Uh, you know, there are too many homes like this to take it down, and we get a monster put up. So can you give us any insight to what you're Well, thinking? yes, we're going to have to go back to the Board of Appeals, as you well know. So go, we're going to have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals for uh, constructing a new building on this site. Mm -hmm. uh, I think most of you are familiar with my work and the type of products that we put out of our office. Um, it certainly will be traditional, and it certainly will be in keeping with the neighborhood. Uh, we did not pursue the design process because this is, as I felt, was a very unusual application because it had already been reviewed once and it was determined to be historically significant. And it didn't make a lot of sense for us to go through the whole design process to develop a new design for the site than have it rejected, because it, it is an expense. Uh, so we try to, to avoid that process. But I, you know, I'm very confident to say it will be in keeping with the neighborhood. Uh, we've done, we did one other house just down the, just down the street from this one. Yeah. Um, and we kept it very traditional. That one did get a delay, but we worked around it and redeveloped the building. Um, I'm sure this will be very tasteful. Why, why do you have to go to zoning? Because it's a pre-existing non-conforming, oh. and because we're taking the building down, yeah. it goes Start back to Zoning again. Board of Appeals for lot coverage and sideline setback non-conformities. I apologize, Jane. Excuse me one second. Um, yes, Jane, I forgot to call on I, you. I'm so sorry. I, that's all right, Brett. Um, and I, I agree with what has been said, but isn't the rule that when uh, a historic house is being demolished, it has to go before the, C the yeah, the C Cape Cod Commission? No, this this is not in the National Register District. Oh, I see. I and forgot. It, it's yeah. So it's there's right. no okay. there's no authority. And relative, okay. to, relative to the decision of uh, voting a historical commission, I mean, voting, voting that it was historically significant, whether the, another board can change it, I don't see any reason why that can't happen, you know. So there's no question. I wish I could say historical significance is a completely objective decision. It's subjective in a lot of ways, so. Okay. All right. I think we have a consensus. Uh, Mr. Lear, can you uh, give us a motion? Uh, 
Okay, I'm of the Chatham Historical Commission finds that the structure located at 19 Highland Avenue is not historically significant because it does not meet any of the definitional criteria in section 158-2 A, B, or C of the bylaw. Therefore, the commission does not impose a demolition delay. Okay, we have a second. Second by Sandy. Okay, uh, any other comments, questions? Members of the public wish to speak for or against the application? Seeing none. Uh, Bob? Yes. Steve? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Jane? Yes. Don? Yes. Sandy? Yes. And the Chair votes yes. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, the next application is 23028 739 Crowell Road. Mr. Norcross is here. James, this is a, um, a property. Uh, I think there were a number of us at the site visit and a uh, very charming home. Uh, it is not in the National Register District. And there is a Form B on, on the property, on the home. I think the house goes back to 18-something, right? 1920. 1839. So it's been around a while. <clears throat> okay. Uh, James, why don't you tell us what you'd like us to know? Sure. Good afternoon. Jamie Norcross representing Damon Wartanen. Uh, Damon is here with me today in the back in the white. Uh, also participating remotely is Jen Lyford, who is the architect for the project. Uh, Damon purchased the property uh, back in late April, and uh, Damon, who is, I guess, an eternal optimist, is uh, excited to have found this place property in Chatham, where he hopes to build a new home for him and his family to come for, for, for many, many years going forward. The home uh, was owned for over 50 years by David Morgan. Uh, I think it was, prim according to our records that we could find, it was primarily used as a rental. There were also a couple garages on the property. And uh, I guess Mr. Morgan liked to tinker with old cars. So that was sort of the historic use, at least for the last 50 years. The, um, according to the Form B, the original section is the front section that you see. And then there were additions put on over the years going toward the back. And so the further you get away from Cruel Road, the more recent the construction begins to become. Uh, at the rear, there's a three seat, or excuse me, a, a, a screened-in porch. Uh, at the very back, there's a two-story structure with a garage on the bottom, and an apartment above. And that looks to be more 1960s, 1970s era construction. So there has been some significant modifications to the property over the years. Uh, the barn that you see in that photograph to the left, that was built according to the assessors, I believe, 1980s, and so that is not uh, considered historic given its age. Um, I'm sure you've all driven by the property many times. I've seen the uh, exterior of the structure. Those of you who came to the site visit on Friday, we went inside, and you could determine that the inside is probably worse than the outside, believe it or not. And so, um, unfortunately, this is a situation where the house was just in total disrepair, um, was not maintained for many, many years. I don't know the last time somebody actually occupied the property, but it's been quite a while. And so, um, it's really past the point where it can be saved in terms of a remodel or renovation, which Damon initially looked at. But um, as we've seen from going through the house and, and observing it with other folks, it's, it's basically rotting from the ground up. There's no foundation on the front section. Uh, it sits on, a, originally sat on some stones with some horizontal beams that ran uh, along the ground. And the house has sort of settled off the beam. And so it's the flooring is rotting. Uh, there's holes throughout the home in the original session, especially with the um, uh, coming down from the bottom. There are uh, rotted sills. There's holes in the roof, which have caused some rotting in joists and the, um, and the framing on the interior as well. Um, again, there's been significant alterations. And so whether or not it's historically significant, I guess, is one question. Uh, irrespective of that, we would respectfully ask uh, that there be no demo delay imposed as really, again, the house is past the point where it can be saved, unfortunately. It's just years and years of neglect have left it um, where it, 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 demolition is really the only feasible option given this home. I know you hear all the time about 
poor condition of homes requiring demolition and we want to put in new features and all the rest, but this house truly is um, at a state where it needs to be demolished. So we'd be happy to answer Mr. any questions, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, just a few comments before we get others. Uh, this house, unfortunately, I know it's not your issue, but is a prime example of something that this board has been very, very concerned about in Chatham, and we call it demolition by benign neglect, uh, you know, where significant historic homes, and this is a significant house, and albeit, you know, a lot number of changes, but that's 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 life, and that's Chatham. It's anywhere changes, uh, but it doesn't it doesn't diminish the historical significance of what was there back in the 1830s. Uh, I, you know, not not independent of the, this decision, I've asked Ryan Christenberry, our principal planner, Steph, uh, to uh, take a look at the application, because regardless of what we do, whether we impose a demolition delay or not, it's obvious the owner plans and demolishing it. Uh, so we'd like to use the house as a good example of what we're trying to do, and that is find some way to uh, impose through some kind of minimal legislation, you know, to, to encourage people to, uh, to maintain homes, at least cover the roof, you know, that kind of thing. So I've had some experience in the past in other communities with that, uh, and it, it does work. So. That's the first thing. The other thing, just we could up front, I know you and I had a conversation during the, uh, the site visit, and thank you very much for allowing us to come in. You're right, the house is in, it, it's terrible to disappear. You know, it looks like it's gonna fall down. But by the same token, there are some elements within the house, the interior house, that if you do demolish it, you know, might be of interest. I guess I'm looking at the owner and looking at you at the same time. That might be of interest, if not to you, but to a salvage company, okay? And those are the boards. There's some wide boards in there. Not a lot of them, but you know, during the demolition, uh, you know, we do have a list of uh, of, of salvage companies. Christina, you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. So, you know, if you could provide that to the applicant through uh, through Mr. Norcross, I would appreciate it. And you know, there's no no imposition here on our part, but we just to encourage you, you know, and, and quite honestly, you know, we've had situations too where somebody comes in and they'll, they'll take the whole house, you know, and it does save you the cost of going to the dump. So anyway, that's my speech. Having said that, <laughs> uh, why don't we walk around the room here and see uh, how we feel about it relative to its historical significance. Uh, we'll start at the other end. Sandy? I, I really don't know what to say. It was at one time a, a lovely home, and the sadness is that it was just so neglected. Is it historically significant? At one time? I'm sorry, could you speak in a little closer to the microphone? At one time, please? I feel it was historically significant. I, sadly, I don't see it now. Okay. Steph? I have to agree with what Sandy said. I am a little bothered by what's going to be put up in its place, but I know that we don't have jurisdiction over that. Um, so that's where I stand. Steve? Um, we've had situations like this before. Uh, I think particularly one on Bridge Street where there was a situ situation where there was an allegation uh, by the applicant that the house was beyond repair, that it was in poor condition, that it that it just had to be demolished. Um, we talked about at that time about the uh, an engineering report that would make it clear that that's the situation. Um, having ex experience in a number of uh, historic buildings, both in Chatham and, and where I lived previously. Um, anything can, can be restored and maintained. It may be expensive um, uh, to, to do it. It may require some uh, real ingenuity. But I just, I don't like to accept, just accept the fact that it appears, you know, un, unsavable. Um, it's certainly unlivable, I, I, no question about that, that uh, 
it's not something that anybody's going to use in his present condition. And I certainly have no um, no concerns at all about the demolition of the property other than the front portion, which is the portion which is historically significant. And the loss of that house is going to make a substantial loss in that neighborhood. Um, I've seen other houses in town, particularly on Old Harbor Road, where people have done significant jobs of retaining the old portion of houses well, and building something around it, behind it, or whatever that uh, accomplishes both goals, and we don't lose the we don't lose the house. Short of that engineering um, determination uh, that we would, that I would ask that the applicant provide. Um, I, I would not approve the, the application to demolish the entire property. Okay, uh, understand, uh, well said. Don? Well, I, I am of the feeling that um, this is historically significant based on the fact that it was built in 19, 1839. It was part of a very prominent, owned by someone in the, a very prominent family in the town, a Nickerson. And it is unfortunate that it's been um, left to rack and ruin, but it is a historically significant property. And um, I lament the fact that it's going to be demolished. Okay, we could, we could deal with that first, historical significance. And then the other way, I, did, did I, like, did you speak, Bob? Frank? Yeah, sorry. Frank? Yeah, okay, Jane, I got you. One second. Um. Yeah. I have yeah. to say yeah. that I I agree with Don. One, one second, Jane. I agree. Jane, just one second. Did you speak already? Okay. I forgot. No, no. Okay, yeah. Yes, Jane, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay, I want to say that I agree with Don. I do think it's historically significant. I particularly like the 1839 uh, facade in front of the house. And... Uh, I feel terrible that it's going to be demolished and it's been left in neglect. Um, but I'm also conscious of, over the years, what Mr. Litchfield has said to us, um, and that is we should be consistent. Uh, when we impose a demo delay, we should not, you know, we should be fair to everybody. So we can't say no demolition delay on one house and demolition delay on another house. And that was something that he made clear with our big discussion about Three Main Street. So I'm concerned about being consistent. I am sorry about losing it. And yes, I think it's historically significant. Thank you. Uh, I think I agree with the, this consensus here from a point of view. It, if we deal with this the way we're supposed to, it's A, is this 1839 structure which is the majority of the, the house that we see in the Form B or in the pictures, uh, is it historically significant? And I think the answer is yes. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry? Oh, I, I forgot. I left you out again? I'm sorry. That's what I get for starting on the other side. So anyway, uh, I guess my feeling is that, A, it is historically significant, and, B, we should find some kind of... Uh, impose some kind of a delay in order to uh, do what we, 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 we do, which is ask the applicant to, uh, to think a little bit more about it. And I think that, that thinking more about it has to do with what he's proposing there, but which will completely demolish the, the, the look in the, of the street. I'm sorry, Bob, go ahead. That's right. Um, I, I, am, I agree with most of what's been said. Um, I have another, another example of a similar sort of situation um, is on um, Stage Harbor Road, and we were able to get the services of Protect Our Past with a consultant to come in. And, and this building that Mr. Burlingame mentioned on Bridge Street, I think there was an assessment, but it was done by a, an engineer for insurance purposes, so we knew where they were coming from. I would be looking for a more uh, independent, perhaps, um, preservation perspective as to whether something can be done because we, I anyway, don't have the knowledge to know whether, yeah, it looks bad and it's got to be torn down or there's good stuff still there. 
and you need some expertise in it, and I would think that we would be able to, we or Mr. Norcross would be able to engage somebody that would be acceptable and, and a professional to say, Mr. Norcross, you're right, but we're historic commission, you're right. There's something salvageable here. So that my inclination would be, let's say, a, I don't know, four-month demolition delay to go through that process and uh, see where we are with real information. Well, you know, it's two, it's two different questions uh, in my mind. We seem to have a consensus that it's historically significant. Did I let you out? I went the wrong way. Go ahead. I wasn't ending it. Okay, got time. So, as far as I see it, uh, there are, I agree with every, not everything that's been said. I respectfully disagree with Steve, uh, and uh, I don't, and you know me, I'm all, you know, for well, the, the historic. The historical significance. It's, it, we had a tour of it on Friday. There's, it is rotten. It is what? It, Different question. Is it historically significant? Or is, that's what the point I was just trying to make here, and I apologize for, for letting go. The question is two questions. A, is it historically significant? If it's historic. Let me, let me finish. Is it historically significant? And B, is it salvageable? No. Okay. Well, the question is, <laughs> the question to you, is it historically significant? It, it, it probably was. Okay. It was. Sometime. It was not. It, it's, it's pathetic. It's sad. It's very sad that someone. Okay. But I, I think, you know, to finish what I was going to say, and I apologize for, that's what I get for, I usually start to my left, and I started to my right and left you out. Don't Mr. Chairman, it. if we could, if I could have a moment. One to, second. Yep. Let me finish my point. And I think the board here is, is you know, is, is looking at two different things. The question that we have to deal with first, is the building, you know, 739, uh, got the address, uh, Crow Road, is it historically significant? If we determine that a property is historically significant, and I use the Steve's point, just as we did at 127, okay, now it's historically significant. What do we do? You know, do we impose a demolition delay? Why do we think it's historically significant? So if we have a historically significant, then the next question is, what do we do? Do we impose a demolition delay or not? Do we impose an 18-month, two-month, or three-month? And we can give advice. And the suggestion that's being made here, it's historically significant. Well, maybe not full 18 months, but a time to assess it, you know, what the owner and even though we don't have jurisdiction relative to what is being proposed, it, it's information that we have. And what I think is being said here is that could the applicant take a look at what you have there and what you're proposing and attempt to, to incorporate the historical significance of what is remaining on that property that is historically significant? So that, that's where I'm coming from. Yes, sure. I'm if, sorry. If I may, the, yeah, sure. it seems to be a real dichotomy between the people who came to the site visit on Friday and walked around the inside of the house and those who didn't attend on Friday, because I think you get a real flavor for the condition of the house if you've seen the inside. No question about it. And I think that's a big aspect of some of the sentiments that are here today. To answer Steve's point, we did engage with Coastal Engineering, and the reason I didn't submit this, we didn't get this till yesterday morning, uh, a structural engineer to provide an opinion on the condition of the property. I'm sorry, what did he say? We engaged with coastal engineering, a structural engineer, to provide an uh, well, opinion on the condition of the property, which I I'm, will submit to you. We didn't receive it till yesterday, unfortunately. Okay. So with the holiday, there was no point. In Does coastal engineering say it's in danger of falling down? Exactly. Yes, that's exactly what they say. Okay. So I All can right. submit that so for, for the board's review. That, and yep. then we'll, 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 we can adjourn. Now what we can do, Notwithstanding that, it could still be historically significant and not a demolition delay. So allow I, us. I, I agree with that. I just the fact that, it, I again, if you see the inside, there's. I'm not sure what you're going to be able to incorporate into a new construction. That's, well, can I tell you then? You asked the question. Sure. Okay. What you could incorporate is you could incorporate the historic elements of this design, which is a simple two-story 1839 structure. And we've done it a hundred times in this town where we have a building that is historic and the owner wants to put a massive addition onto the house, okay? You can still do that and you can still maintain with the right kind of architect the historical integrity of the, of the property and the streetscape. That's, that's what we, can be done. 
notwithstanding. But that's not saving the original structure. Which Say again? Is, that's not saving the original structure. That, which yes, is what it you're, is. It's saving, you, you know, uh, look, James, I don't want to argue with you. The question is, are there any elements of the structure? Is the how is the structure completely rotted? Yes. But, uh, okay, then, yes. then 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 let me go back to Steve's point. You got to we got to focus on the building. Go back to Steve's point. Give, give us give us the, the the results of your coastal engineering. Be happy to. We can to. take it from there. I mean, I think in the future, quite honestly, I mean, you know this property is historically significant. You see the form B. Yes. Okay, and you're smart enough to know what what we do. Okay, it's historically significant, but it's falling down. There's powder post. Yeah, do that. Give us, give us the report. And, and we would have. We just, unfortunately, with the time, and we didn't get it. Uh, understand. In advance. I don't of think the there's meeting, anything punitive here. No, We're I understand. Just trying that. to go through the process, sir. Okay. I'm looking at the applicant because he, he did have some sonics. So, at this particular point, yes, Steve. Uh, just to, uh, to move on because otherwise we can discuss what we're discussing now, forever. I, I would propose that we continue uh, this hearing until the uh, last meeting in July in order for the applicant to present to us the Coastal Engineering um, Report uh, for our review and also to give us the opportunity to seek the advice um, of the, the persons with, we really used fine. on Old Harper Road uh, for, for their assessment as well. I, I, I just think that no, I, I, what I see a house, particularly because of the neglect, is, is not intentional, but darn close to it. And then don't blame the new owners. They, they had nothing to do with that. Uh, and they've taken the property as they, as they see it. But I think that to discourage people from letting their house fall apart and say, oh, okay, it's beyond repair, we now, we now want to tear it down and build a new house. Um, that I don't want to punish those people, but I don't want to encourage them to let this happen. You're hitting it, the nail on the head. And trying to, do, trying to do that, I think that we should, in, in a situation like this, when there is that neglected deterioration of a house, um, that we look very carefully at what can what can be saved. It may be um, maybe a slam dunk that it's too far gone for anything to happen for any any type of improvement. On the other hand, there may be some features or things that can be uh, like on Old Harbor Road that that can be saved and should be saved. Um, this house is unique in a number of ways. Being a 1839 vintage is not unique. There are a lot of those houses. But the, the design with the um, short second floor, um, it, it, it's unique. It's a, it's a unique yes. structure. It's very vernacular. And as a consequence, I, I, hate, I really hate to see it go. So I, don't, I wouldn't vote to see it go uh, soon without a... a Kind of a thorough review and examination of the property. Okay, good. Uh, what I'd like—that's my I'd, motion. I'd like to, like to give indulgence. What we could do, okay, to put this thing in play, I think there's a sufficient number of members who feel it's historical significance. We can take the historical significance vote, okay, and then ask, then adjourn it till we get the report and look at the report, okay? Uh, well, Mr. Chairman, in terms of timing, we have the report, which- I'm will, sorry? We have the report, which we'll submit Well, we wouldn't just look today. at the report. We would also- uh, No, I understand you want a chance to review it, but we can't, whatever third party you're gonna send it to to review, I don't know how that process well, plays the, out. Well, there's no third party. We very simply take the report and ask the building inspector, Mr. Okay. Mr. Briggs, is this, is this dangerous? Is it falling down? Or not? See, is, that's it, the question. That's fine. Is there an earlier meeting than the second meeting in July? No, unfortunately, can... this is summertime. Okay. And so our far. next meeting is Christina. July 18th. July 18th. July 18th? Yeah. yeah. Mm. All right. So can you give me a motion relative to historical significance? Let's get that out of the way. Sure. I move that the Chatham Historical Commission finds that the building. Uh, the, the main building located at 739 Quoll Road is historically significant because it is in whole or in part 75 years old or more, and it is also associated with one or more historical persons or events in the town and possesses architectural value or significance in terms of period and style. Second, Jane. 
Second by Jane Moffitt. Okay. Uh, any other comments, questions? Members of the public? Okay, we'll do a quick roll call. Mr. Lear? Yes. Mr. Burlingame? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Jane? Yes. Don? Yes. Sandy? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Okay, now we're gonna, we're gonna ask to adjourn, we're gonna provide a copy to Christina and we'll, it'll be on our agenda for our next meeting, which unfortunately is July 18th, which I think was just. Would it be possible to schedule another site visit that would work better for everyone's schedule so we could get uh, another view inside the property? I think that's really important for people to see it. Well, does anybody else, we generally don't go inside buildings. That's no, I understand not, that. I think in this circumstances, it, and, and it's we, really illustrative. We estate. generally don't go inside the buildings, and that's why that very issue, which Steve is making, we don't make a determination. I'm an electrical engineer, okay? Mm -hmm. We don't make the structural. De we don't make the structural decision. We rely upon the building inspector to assist us relative to structural decision. And I do agree. I'm not trying to be cute here. There's two decisions: a, it's falling down. You can't go in the building. It's dangerous. And b, is it salvageable? Your report is going to talk to the salvageable issue. I assume that's what what. what uh, well, they're, they're, it's talking to the fact that, in his opinion, it can't yeah, be. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's the the classic down. question: is is any building repairable? Yeah, of course it's repairable. How much money are you going to put into it? We realize that that's a that's a subjective question, and it's and it's, sometimes it's a burden on an applicant to ask him to put more money into the building. But we do do it, mm -hmm. and. The purpose of the delay, a demo delay, if we do that, is just to take step back and take a look at it. That's all we can do. Okay. We can't say no. We can just ask you to delay it and think about it. So if we can continue to your July meeting, and then in the meantime, we're happy to get access from Mr. Briggs if okay. that's who needs to come see the property. Absolutely, and he can be in touch. And Jamie, Are we okay here, guys? And Jamie, you'll provide what? the report for everybody. Yes, Sa I, Sandy, I, you got something to say? Say it to everybody. Uh, well, I was Sandy Porter. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I was asking, and I just wanted to um, be sure that Mr. Norcross would send a report to everybody for us to study before we have the meeting. I'll, I'll send it today. What's the? Should I send it to Christina for her to circulate everyone? Just send to it everyone? to Christina, and then she'll distribute it. Okay, great. Okay. That'll Mr. Come Chairman, today. I move that we continue the hearing on application number 23-028 at 739 Kroll Road to our meeting held on July 18th, 2023. Thank you very much. I'll second. Second by Steph. Mr. Lear? Yes. Steve? Uh, before I vote, um, and I, I vote in the affirmative, I, I do think that we, it, it ought to be for some reason, not just because of its, uh, we want to continue it, I, I would amend the motion to, um, if, I, if I could, uh, and I offer the amendment that it be continued for the purpose of receiving the report from the applicant, um, which may be uh, significant, not significant. It may be Got it. heavily prejudiced in favor of, of the, the cost to the, uh, to the homeowner. Thank you. Um, but I would like... To us to have, take this opportunity to uh, have uh, our own experts uh, review the the property, um, both for the perspective of uh, it, its condition and its um, signif sig historical significance, whether it's such that it, we got to go beyond the usual uh, recommendations. Excuse me, excuse me. You're making a whole new motion here. All right, I would that's why I said it was an yeah, amendment. All right, look, uh, you know, we got a, we have a, an amendment to the motion here. I, I will second the, the Steve's all right, abbreviated so we're amendment. The amended motion. <laughs> Mr. Lear. Yes. Mr. Burlingame. Yes. Stephanie. Yes. Jane. Yes. Don. Yes. Sandy. Yes. Yes, and the chair votes yes. Okay. Do we have another motion there? Did I lose track? No, we're good. Great. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm asking for a five-minute recess. All right. You didn't hear. We're going we're gonna to break for uh, five minutes, okay? Uh, control room, we're going to take a five-minute
hiatus. Thank you very much. Steve, yeah. Steve, one, well, let, let them finish on the air. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your uh, allowing us to take a brief hiatus. Uh, we'll continue the meeting, uh, the June 26, 2023. We have a third application, application 230229. Be heard in according with chapter 158, 86 Highland Avenue. Please come forward. I think we lost Mr. Nicastro. He wanted to say a few words, but I've lost him. Yes. My name is Kevin Boyer. Oh, uh, excuse being... me one second. I sure. got my little speech first. Uh, there is a Form B on this property, uh, and uh, it is not in the National Register District. And uh, I confer myself here. Lower priority for Form B, but was done. Okay. All right. I now understand my own handwriting here. So anyway, long story short, there is a Form B on the property, and most of us did take a side visit. So I apologize. Introduce yourself. My name is Kevin Boyer, B&D Custom Builders, and uh, we are representing Mike and Kate Joseph uh, in relation to the addition renovation of the property at 86 Highland. Um, I did have the opportunity of meeting several of you on site, and I know that uh, with Mike and Kate there as well. They emphasized how much they enjoy the property, uh, that they've been tenants there for a number of years uh, during the summer, and we're fortunate this past fall to be able to purchase it. 
Um, they are absolutely looking to retain the historic significance of the property as it relates to the front porch. The entire front elevation uh, will remain untouched, and we're simply looking to expand the property based upon their family's needs. And I'm available to answer any questions. All right, why don't you uh, take us quickly through Sure, you your can see actually the, uh, proposing. the rendering to the left is the as is conditions. The rendering to the right is as proposed, and you'll see that the entire front porch, the two windows, and the little dormer remain untouched. Well, I guess a question is going to ask is how far back is that addition relative to the facade of the, fr the front? In terms of, I can step over, I, uh, um, if you'd like, I can walk away from the microphone, but perhaps even looking at the floor plan, that might be helpful because you'll see that it's actually recessed quite a bit back. Okay. Sorry. So uh, Andy, would you like me to thing? step up to it? Yeah. You, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna be able to hurt. The microphone will catch it, but just point it out. Oh, there is a there is a small mic. There you go. So why don't you go back to the mic? Go back to. I think that's a pointer. Pointer, even better. Yeah, talking to your tie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can see the stairway uh, as a frame of reference. Here's the stairway over here. So the entire front porch remains untouched. This portion of the house remains untouched. Got it. And we're basically expanding in that area. Got it. It's important to us to attempt to separate the original building from the addition. Sure. And that's why I was asking the question. Yeah. Thank well, you very much. One of the other things that, that we were uh, sensitive to, even as it relates to the design, um, is we tried, even with the addition, to maintain that same kind of uh, aesthetic continuity. There are no skylights. There are no architectural details that are not in keeping with the original four square. Okay. What is that, the general uh, design? Uh, I'm trying to think of what, what the form is. Four square. He calls it four square. A four square. Yeah, four square. Typical 1900? It, yeah, the, the significance there is that it is, in essence, as wide as it is deep as it is tall. Yeah. yeah. And so that's, that's, that's a building around 1900, Correct. a design that was right. probably around 1900. Right. Interestingly Four enough, further uh, closer to the, uh, the little Catholic church, um, and we included this just as a frame of reference, there's a house that was also a four-square that has been dramatically changed. And right. as you know, right. on that street itself, there are properties with skylights, there uh. are properties that are very contemporary. Uh, so we've really made a, a concerted effort to, uh, to kind of live up to the original intent as it relates to, uh, again, architectural continuity. All right. Nice job. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see if we get some comments. I'll start as I usually do to my left, so I won't leave Janet out and she won't get mad at me. <laughs> Never get mad at you, Frank. Um, I, th I, th I love that house, and I think it's, um, you've done a great job. It, I think it's historic, obviously, and I think you've done a really great job with the design. It's really, the streetscape will not, from what I can tell from the plans, will not be affected. It'll look pretty much the same. Yeah. It's all out and back, which is really great, and um, I think it's a good design. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bob? Um, interestingly enough, I had friends that rented this house uh, probably 30 years ago or something, so I'm <laughs> familiar with it. Um, and one of my pet peeves is if you numbered your drawings, it would be easier for us to refer, yes. make sure we're literally on the same page. And your last drawing, with the, the aerial view, which I think is very helpful to the question about how far is it set back, what it yeah. sets that out very well. And, and because, as Janet said, it is back far enough and you're keeping with the stylistic features, I don't have any problem with the uh, changes. Thank you. Very good. Don? As we all know, on, the, on this commission, houses grow over the years. Back in the 1700s, they were small and they were added to and added to. 
this is the same type of thing that's happening now, and I appreciate the fact that it is, the addition is set back from the House, so it's going to be obviously uh, well determined and well de defined, uh, and I am fully supportive of this. Thank you. Thank you. Steve? I agree with Don. That's it? <laughs> I think the design is very appropriate. I think that they've, they've taken the uh, Sorry, taken what they're the dealt with and they've <laughs> reacted well. <laughs> Step. <That's a> <laughs> <laughs> I was very happy to see the d changes you were making and how the old house was going to be preserved. In thank you. Thank you, Sandy. I concur. Nicely done. Thank you very much. And the chair generally concurs, and it was a pleasure to meet the, uh, the new Frank. Jane. 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 Frank. Jane, sorry, Jane, out of sight. I know, out of mind. Um, I want to say my usual swan song, which is I really appreciate the fact that the owner is saving the old part of the house, which has already been mentioned, and that the addition will be stylistically appropriate for the original house. So thank you very much and thank you for doing that. Jane, thank you very much. I apologize again, trying to do too many things at once. <laughs> uh, I, I guess okay, I can cut with everybody um, in terms of, uh, you know, what you've done and a uh, very charming house. And I'm glad I finally remember what that design is called, Foursquare. Uh, okay. Uh, do we have members of the public who would like to speak for or against the application? No. Okay. Mr. Chair, Mr. Uh, Lear, a motion, please. I move the Chatham Historical Commission find that the building located at 86 Highland Avenue is historically significant because it is in whole or in part 75 years old or more. And it is associated with one or more historic persons and economic and social political, political history of the town and possesses architectural value or significance in terms of period, style, and method of construction. Okay. Do we have a second? I second. will second. Thank you, Steph. Second. Any other comments or questions, members of the public? Okay. We're going to do a roll call. Mr. Lear? Yes. Steve? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Jane? Yes. Don? Yes. And Sandy? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Oh, sorry, we got a part two. We got one more part. <laughs> okay. Moving too, trying to move along here, guys. <laughs> too fast. Chatham Historical Commission also finds that the proposed work to be done dated this date will not materially diminish the historical significance of the building, and therefore the commission does not impose a demolition delay. Second. Second, Second Sandy? I, I don't know. Sorry. Okay, Steph, thank you very much. Uh, roll call, Mr. Lear? Yes. Steve? Yes. Steph? Yes. Jane? Yes. Don? Yes. Sandy? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. We have some new business here. We have no current uh, administrative review ratifications, but for some reason on our new business here, it says Miss Moffitt. Jane, you wanted to say a few words as this is your last meeting. Thank you very much, Frank. Can people hear me? Yes, I don't just, have much just get voice. as close to the I, microphone as you can. Um, okay, I am unfortunately don't have much of a voice, uh, but can I, can you hear me now? Yes, we're good. Okay. First of all, I want to say how sad I am about uh, ben, he was a good friend and uh, also a good member of CHC. He wanted to be on it so badly that he often asked me, do I have to wait somebody for somebody to die before it can be on it? <laughs> and I said, no, but I, I tried to help him join, and so I'm sorry about that. I'm also very sad about leaving the CHC after 16 years I can't believe it. I don't know where the 16 years have gone. I joined in 2007 on an unexpired term. 
and Don Aikman may know the person I replaced, because I can't remember her name, and I served under four strong leaders, Nancy Yaw, Don Aikman, Bob Oliver, and you, Frank, and you have been a wonderful leader. You worked so hard. You've accomplished so much. You can be so proud. And I wanted to say to the whole board that I think we worked well together over the years. I think this morning was a very good example of how we respect each other's ideas and come to an agreement that I think we can all live with each time. Um, we've won some, we've lost some, but over the years, I think we won more. We saved several historic structures. Uh, for instance, I think the John Hallett's store was probably one of the biggest victories that I feel, anyway. The greenhouse, so-called, because I started my membership on the CHC with that house and I'm or store or building, and I'm almost ending it with that. And he's done a complete about face, and it will be restored forever. So that's a real victory. And as for me personally, I learned a lot about how to read architectural drawings on the inside. I learned about wood chamfering, chiseling. I learned new vocabulary words, for instance, <laughs> Perlin. When I was upstairs in the Atwood house, I learned about new insects, like powder post beetles. On site visits, we saw locations I never would have seen before or ever. And an example of that recently is 448 Old Harbor Road, which I drive by all the time on my way to my brother's house. And I never would have seen it. It's over the edge and right across from uh, Turn Island, a fabulous location. So I will miss it. I will miss you all. And I wish you good luck, especially on your continuation of a discussion about 739 Crawl Road. I'll be anxious <laughs> to hear how that goes. So that's my swan song. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Really, Jane, we appreciate it. You know, you mentioned when you first came on the board and the first big decision was uh, Chatham objects to a makeover. It's on the, the front page of the... Uh, the Cape and the Island, the Cape Cod Times, the uh, infamous uh, Main Street, uh, Sweet Home, Chatham's Main Street can't stand any more architectural whimsy. So uh, you're right. And, and then, just like you said, just about last month, we were able to visit the property, and uh, it's, I think, as Don indicated, we're probably going to see it there for another couple hundred years. Well, we won't see it, but I think it, it should be there, given the, the amount of time and money and effort that the applicant is now putting into the property to restore it. So anyway, um, I'm, I'm going to let... Can I say one more thing, Frank, about sure. the greenhouse? Um, I forgot to mention this, but there was a reporter from the Cape Cod Times who called me in the Adirondacks, where I was in August, to ask me all about the greenhouse. So I had to tell them about it. So I've sort of lived with that for a long time. I also happened to save the article, uh, which is relevant to the greenhouse, in which Bill Riley called us well-meaning volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, I will we never get forget it. We that. Get it. <laughs> it's a personal And I will never story. let him forget it. Yes. Okay, well, I'm going to just go around the board and see if people would like to say anything. Uh, Janet? Well, Jane, uh, I know Jane from not only the Historical Commission, but I knew her uh, before that, even with Marconi Maritime Center, and I'm going to miss seeing you and your, all you bring to the both organizations with your wisdom and your knowledge and your personality. Thank you. Thanks, Janet. Thank you so much. Bob? It's been fun. I agree with what Janet said. Your, your insights and your uh, approach has always uh, uh, resonates well with me. Thank you, Bob. That's Hi. wonderful. We work together on CPC. Jane, um, having served as chairman of this committee when you were very active on it, I want you to know that we learned a lot from you 
and, and all the expertise that you had from your past. And we'll miss you. Uh, I, you mentioned the Main Street, the Calico Cat. Seeing how that is being preserved is, is a thrill to me because of what we went through when they were trying to pick it up and move it. And um, I, I, I'm still very happy that we, we were able to prevail. Thanks, Jane, for all your, your work. Oh, thank you, Don. I have to say that I sailed with the owners. So I'm a very good friend of um, the wife of the owner. And I like to think that maybe that had a little to do with it. We didn't talk about the greenhouse while we were sailing, or we would have capsized. <laughs> See? Jane, I think you've clearly been an inspiration to me if, and to the entire board. Your perspective is, is uh, appropriate. Um, you, you've never been domineering, but uh, involved and caring. Um, I, I think that your perspective is the is the perspective that we all seek to uh, approach the, our participation in, on the commission as uh, um, you just a, the way a commission member ought to be, and we appreciate it all. Thank you so much, Steve. I remember you from the forty charts <laughs> at the Abbott House that uh, CPC granted to be restored. Steph? I want to thank Jane because she's always been there to answer any question that I might have or to help me along. Um, Jane, one of the things I've been really, really impressed with was your fantastic memory. <laughs> uh, yes. Thank, thanks, Steph. I used to teach history. That helps. <laughs> Sandy? Janie, you will be missed. You you um, always have good insight, and you've taught me a lot. I will miss you greatly. Thanks, Sandy. You're a real friend, and I I learned a lot from you when you were our liaison. <laughs> There's one more gentleman I'd like to say a few words, Mr. Nicastro. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, hi, Jane. Um, I wanted to be here uh, when I saw this on the agenda um, because uh, I, I really wanted to salute Jane for her service uh, and outstanding dedication uh, to her commitment as a member of the Historical Commission. Um, she certainly offered a very careful and diligent discernment about the subject matter of historic preservation. She never shied away from offering her own independent perspective, even uh, when she was a minority of one. I know how that feels, by the way. Um, I want to commend you, Jane, for your loyal and faithful service to the town of Chatham on behalf of the select board, and your service to the CPC committee, and to the community, as has been mentioned in Marconi. But on a personal note, um, uh, Jane and I uh, discovered in a conversation we had a couple of years ago that we had um, some common um, background, as it were. Uh, she has she had two uncles. I think they were uncles, or are they great uncles, Jane? Jane, your uncles, I think. They uh, were my great uncles. Great uncles, and yes. I knew one of them uh, up in Quincy. Um, one was also in Braintree. Her uncle in Quincy was a very distinguished businessman. Um, and very active in the Church of the Presidents, uh, speaking of historic preservation, where the Adamses are buried. He was also on the MBTA board. Very, very fine gentleman. I didn't know her other uncle, but Jane told me that he owned the Hunt's Potato Chip Company uh, in Braintree. No, uh, Dean, Dean, may I correct you a minute? Yeah. That was my grandfather. Your so grandfather, he, okay. That's all right. I had the, had the relationship wrong. Now, and Hunt's they were Potato the best. Chip Hunt's Potato Chips was a local potato chip company up, up, in, up in Braintree. I remember visiting it as a Cub Scout. Um, <laughs> and you could get a pack for five cents in any, any drugstore or, or convenient, what was, we used to call local neighborhood markets back then. But anyway, uh, I, I want to salute you, Jane, uh, for your service to the town. And you will greatly be missed, as, as your colleagues have mentioned. Uh, uh, and uh, thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dean, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. I certainly didn't expect that. I didn't expect any of the comments. I'm almost ready to cry, but I can't do that. No, you so, can't. You can't. I, I, All right. You know, I might be like Don. I might decide I miss it so much. I have to come back. But in that case, I would be 91. I don't think so. <laughs> well, we'll see. Well, Jane, you know, uh, I, I met Jane before the Historical Commission, and, and I made the mistake of uh, going to the Eldridge Library and read something about something called uh, Marconi. And, uh, and I all of a sudden found myself as a member in, of the Chatham Marconi Maritime Center. And I think the first time we were pulling, uh, we were pulling ivy off the building before we owned the building or even had a lease. And that was got to be 25 years ago. So I've known Jane and Reed for a long time. All right, so we're going to move on for the agenda very quickly to get out of here. Uh, we have something to do at, at about 12.30. Uh, uh, just quickly, old business, if I may, if you would indulge me. Uh, the archaeological uh, survey update is proceeding very well with PAL. I hope to have some kind of a report either in the late summer or early fall. Uh, the survey plan with Eric Dre uh, updated the survey in the Form Bs is also proceeding uh, on our, on our uh, July 18th meeting. Christina, help me here. I believe we've scheduled Eric to come make a presentation. I believe it's going to be in August. We have one meeting in August, and it will in be August? that meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Eric is proceeding, and then he will be coming to the board with some recommendations and looking for some guidance from us on how to proceed with the Form Bs or the Form As. Uh, the other survey, the third one, it's amazing. We've been waiting like five or six years to do this, and now we're doing all three at the same time. Uh, Dan Zoto, who's also an archaeologist, is proceeding with the Form Es on the cemeteries. And I may not have sent it out, but he's looking for information about the cemeteries, local knowledge. And I'd ask members of the commission and the public, the, the four people who are watching, is if anybody knows of any specific uh, important individual you know, who's, who's, who's resting in peace in uh, Chatham Cemetery, to let me know, and and and, and he will he will annotate that. For instance, uh, Colonel Godfrey, who we all know for the Godfrey Grisville, he's buried in the Old North Cemetery, and we found some information about that. So when he does the form E for the North Cemetery, he'll just you know annotate the best he can significant people to the community you know or who are interred there. So anybody think about that? I think I sent it to you, Steve. So you have a, some knowledge and and we can maybe help him out, so. Uh, From what I've seen, he's done an excellent job. Oh yeah, he's, he's good, he's a good guy. So, you know, just as we've done with the Form Bs and the properties, we'll now have a good historical record of our cemeteries and, and who's there and, and, uh, and where we go. So, okay, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, again, Ryan Christenberry is working very well, and as I said earlier, I gave her the uh, information about the this property that we're going to be talking about again over an example of uh, benign neglect. So I don't have anything else. Anybody else have something to add to the meeting? If not, just motion move. to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second? I'll second. Second by Steph. I'm sure there's no discussion. Mr. Lear? Yes. Steve? Yes. Steph? Yes. Don? Yes. Sandy? Yes. Is that it? Oh, no, Jane, oh. how do you vote? Hi. <laughs> yes. 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 Thank you, Jane. And the chair votes yes. We're going to miss you, Jane. I'm going to miss you guys. Thank you very much, folks. Back. I'm going to miss you, Jane. Oh, Christian, I'll see you at the, I'll see you at the hair company. Definitely. So yeah. I... I